All right, so the lesson we're doing right now is going to be the second lesson in Unit 2, which is on vectors and parametric equations. This lesson is titled Introduction to Application of Vectors. And you can see from the big pictures that it's going to take two days to cover this. The actual lesson name that we're going to be using to cover this is going to be Vectors and Geometry. Now the lesson in the teacher pages tells you to teach the students how to do this using geometric addition where you do the tip to tail method or the triangle method, however you want to call it. But what we're going to do is actually teach it by using component form of vectors. And with the component form of vectors, just as a reminder, the x coordinate is r cosine of theta, and the y coordinate is r sine of theta, where the r is the magnitude of each vector, and the theta is the direction of each vector. So you can see how they're asking the students to write it and do the head to tail method as they're working these out. But again, we're going to use the component form instead. So as we look at example for the first problem here, 1a, it says vector u has a magnitude of 3 miles and a direction of due east. Now if you look at your unit circle, East is zero degrees. So that would be our direction. Then it says vector V has a magnitude of three miles and is directed due north. Well, north would be 90 degrees. So when we set this up, we have two vectors. Both of them have a magnitude of three and one has a magnitude of zero. The other one has a magnitude of 90. And then it says, what are the magnitude and direction angle for the resultant vector. So we'll come over here to the side. Vector u again had a magnitude of 3 and a direction of 0. So this is what vector u is going to look like in component form. Then it said vector v that we're going to add to it so we can get the resultant had a magnitude of 3 and a direction of 90 degrees. So its component form looks like this. So you have the, the choice of whether you're going to work these out by using the unit circle. But the next lesson actually brings in angles that aren't on the unit circle. So what I do normally in this lesson is I go ahead and teach the students how they can simply just put this in their graphing calculator to get the vector, the resultant vector. So let's go to the calculator and do that now. So we want to make sure our calculator is in degrees. And then we can just simply enter it in as 3 cosine 0 plus 3 cosine 90. And that gives us 3. And then we have 3 sine 0 plus 3 sine 90. And that gives us 3 as well. And then we can simply go put back to our work and put those in. So now we have the answer to the result. The resultant vector is 3, 3. And now we need to find the magnitude and direction of that. To find the magnitude, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem on the x and y coordinates. So r will equal the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared. That ends up being the square root of 18, which is 3 root 2. And we want to make sure we put the units, which was miles. Now, since we're letting them use the calculator, sometimes I'll allow them to go ahead and just put this in decimal form. But it's up to you and what you want your students to be doing. Now, to find the direction, we need to use the formula inverse tangent of y over x. So that would be 3 over 3. 
If they put this in their calculator, they will get 45 degrees. You just need to tell them they need to make sure that it agrees with what quadrant this vector is in. And since this vector is in quadrant 1, 45 degrees is the correct answer. If this vector ends up being in quadrant 2 or 3, the calculator will never give them that answer. So they'll end up having to add 180 to that angle in order to get it. So now let's look at a different example of a problem that you'll need to give them a heads up on probably. And that's 1H. This says that vector u has a magnitude of 10 inches and a direction of 45. So it's actually going ahead and telling them the angles this time. And then vector v has a magnitude of 10 and a direction of 225. So if we were to set these up, that would be 10 cosine of 45, 10 sine of 45, plus 10 cosine 225, 10 sine 225, and again, we can go to our calculator and add these up. So we have 10 cosine of 45 plus 10 cosine of 225, that gives us zero. And then if we were to do the signs, it'd be 10 sine of 45 plus 10 sine of 225 equals zero. And I like to show calculator tricks every now and again. So another way you could have done that is rather than having to type in the whole thing all over again with the signs, just you could re-enter that and then go all the way to the left by doing second left and change that cosine to sine and change this cosine to sine and hit enter. And that's another way you can get that as well without having to retype everything. So now let's go back and put those in our work. So this ended up giving us the vector 0, 0. Well, that means the magnitude of this would be 0 inches. No need to try to do the Pythagorean theorem on that. And then for the angle, that would be the inverse tangent of 0 over 0, which doesn't exist. This is indeterminate. So you could either answer any direction, which is the way the lesson actually answers it. But another acceptable answer would be no direction because it doesn't actually go in any direction. Now to give you a heads up on some of the other problems in this lesson that you would probably want to give your students the heads up on too, R number two, which makes them think abstractly about these vectors A and B pulling opposite directions and the three possibilities for the resultant. Numbers four and five actually give the resultant and one of the component vectors and they have to find the other one. And so you may want to mention that and ask the class what they're going to have to do. Maybe tell them don't answer out loud, but just be thinking about what they would do. And then number six is more advanced that you can decide on whether to give your class or not to do.